So for day two, we're going to talk uh, for a little while about setting up a real device. You will get the best results if you can test your apps on real devices, whether they are Android or iOS devices. So again, we're focusing on Android devices at the moment in this class. We will talk about the other devices later. Um, but I want to set up my real Android device. There's a handout. I gave it at the end of the day, but now we'll look at it in depth in class. If you go back to the network folder, so on the desktop you want to double-click computer. And then inside of classroom data drive Z, open that up. And then scroll down to find campus Android 2. You want to get a copy of 3A and possibly 3B. I have modern device, older device. And the delineation there is basically if you've got a device older than Android 4.0, we might have to do the older device setup. How do you check which version you have? We'll see how to do that in a moment. But in any event, I'm going to copy both of those to my desktop, and then we will look at them. 3A. Uh, it looks like we got some ink on the printer now, but we'll print during the next break if you want to print. <coughs> so for 3A, uh, at the top here we're going to set up a real device, and it says do not plug in your device before following these steps. We have to do a couple of things for setup, then we can plug in and get, and get using it. Before we look at these items here, uh, I can't exactly show it on, on the screen yet, but if you have a real device, what you want to do is, however yours is set up, you want to go to your settings. On mine, mine's a Android 5.0. On mine, I can swipe from the top down, and then uh, tap at the top, and there's a little settings icon. It's settings somewhere. Everyone can get to settings somehow, but on mine, if I swipe twice down from the top, I get a little gear for settings. If I go to settings, at the very bottom I want to go look at about phone. I just want to see what version of Android I may have, and then we'll do these steps. So somewhere in your settings, and all these devices are different. I was using a, a few years ago, I was using an Android 2.2 device, and to find that info was kind of hidden. And then later on I got an, another one in like an Android 4.0, and then it was a little bit more standardized. This was a 5.0, and then my own run at the moment is 6.0, so these things change. But I'm going to go look in the About Phone screen, and I'm seeing right there, easily on mine, Android version 5.1. That's what I've got on mine. If you've got a 4. Point whatever, you should be fine. If you've got a 6. Point whatever, it should be fine. If you've got 7, well, you're on the cutting edge because it just came out like two weeks ago. If you've got a 3.0, most likely you don't have a 3.0, because 3.0 or 3X was an anomaly. It was going to be like an offshoot of the main Android devices when tablets started to get popular. So you don't really see 3X anymore. And then 2X is even older, and you don't see those that often anymore. 1X, those are like in a museum. So whatever you have at the moment should probably work. Um, that was just information for me. I've got 5.1. This is also valuable to know because later on, if you have a real device, we will see that we will be able to control it from my computer. When I do, do the debugging stuff from the computer, I can click and drag and do stuff on my phone, plugged in, of course, if it's newer than 4.4. 4. So if I've got a 4.1, mm, I can't control it, but I can debug it. So knowing that might be useful. What I have to do on the handout here, okay, we're not going to jailbreak the device, we're not going to void your warranty, we're not going to do any of that. We're simply going to activate developer mode because every Android device is either consumer mode or developer mode and most people want it as consumer mode. I'm a regular person, I go to the store, I buy the phone, I need it for apps and calling people and that's it. We uh, need it for that as well, perhaps, as uh, for app development. So I need to activate the ability for me to install any app I want onto my device by bypassing the official app store. That's called side-loading an app. <coughs> you 
the official way to get an app, of course, is usually the App Store. We're going to sidestep it. We're going to sideload. This does not void your warranty. This does not jailbreak your device. This is not detrimental. It can be turned on or off. We're going to turn on developer mode, which means we can install any app we want, which in theory means any app could be installed on our device that is detrimental. If we're hanging out on a lot of weird websites that perhaps we shouldn't be, there could be ability that an app gets installed on your device without you paying too much attention if we activate this mode we're about to. So I'm going to say we're going to activate the developer mode only in, only in class. Then when we're done in class, we'll turn it off so that our device is safe again. <coughs> so what we need to do, every device is different. The following steps are approximate. I'm going to go to the home screen of my device, so that's usually pressing the home button. Could I ask you to mute your device there, please? And um, somewhere, I'm going to go over to the settings. As I said, in mine, if I swipe down twice from the top, I will see a gear. I can also find settings if I go to my main apps, although I often do see Google settings and settings. I want plain old device settings. So Google setting looks like a gear with a G, and regular phone settings is a gear. I want to go over to settings. We were actually there a moment ago if you were looking at your Android version, but I'm under settings. I have at the very bottom, second last, second to the last, I have an icon that says developer options. You probably don't because you have not activated developer mode yet. To activate developer mode, I have here, if you don't see developer options, go to settings, about phone, and tap build number seven times. It's kind of interesting. I'm going to go to about phone. I want to see the status, legal info, Android security patch level, etc. Build number. I've got a build number here. I'm going to tap it seven times. One, two, three. It's going to start to tell me. Four more taps and you're a developer. Tap, tap, tap. Seven taps, you're a developer. So lucky number seven. I've tapped it seven times. I'm going to back up one screen and I see at the very bottom developer settings. Question? Could we give you uh, a wire please? Yes, you can borrow this one right here. And so I have a brand new screen of developer options. I'm going to tap that. There's a lot of options that we don't really need to, uh, to worry about. The one at the top is, I've got a button to turn it simply on or off, be a developer or not. So it's a simple flick of the button uh, to activate or deactivate this. Again, it's not jailbreaking, it's not avoiding warranty, it's just activating developer mode. And from this screen, what I want to do is, I have to, I want to select the one that says activate USB debugging. It's going to be there somewhere in your menu. You can activate USB debugging. A big scary pop up will appear which says USB debugging is intended for development purposes only. Use it to copy data between your computer and your device. Install apps on your device without notification and read log data. So, again, in theory, if I've activated this mode, I could go off to a website on my phone, a pop-up happens that says, oh, you've been infected, click here to scan your to scan your device. You say, I'm infected, and you click OK. You just installed, you just sideloaded an app. You sideloaded an app that will take over your computer and steal everything. So in class, we're going to turn this on. But when we finish class, we're going to go back to the screen and turn this off. So that as you're out there in the real world, you are not exposed. But in class, for development purposes, we need this. I'm going to click OK. And I would recommend also to activate the stay awake um, item. It's gonna, if you've got a, a, a password on your computer, for example, every time you lock it, you're going to have to unlock it every time you want to see the development in, in Taco. I recommend stay awake because you're going to have it plugged in. It's going to be charging. You're, gonna, you're, you're, you're not going to let it lock. You're not going to let it go to sleep. I'm going to leave it as stay awake. 
Those are the two things I need to do on a device. Activate USB debugging and activate stay awake. Once I'm done with that, I'll take it to the home screen. I still won't plug it in because I've set up my device. But what I still need to do is set up the actual computer. So I'm done setting that up. I'll put that to the side. And here's the part that's always the trickier, the trickier step. And I build in time to the second day of class to address this to help people. This is the part now where everyone's going to be on a very different track. Because now what we need to do is find the OEM driver, the original equipment manufacturer driver. The driver that will allow our computer to connect to the device to upload an app. Now if you buy a device. There's often the consumer level version, which is that I want to put my music on the device. I want to do that consumer level stuff. I want to transfer a photo to the device or from the device. That's co consumer level. We want to transfer an app. We want to install an app. That's often a special driver. So, if you have a Motorola device, most likely it's ready to go because I have a Motorola device. I've installed the driver on all of these computers just so that I can work on them quickly and such. If you've got a Motorola device, it might be ready to work. If you don't have a Motorola device, Samsung, LG, etc., most likely you have to download the driver. I, have, I haven't set that up. And so the best that I can do here is to guide you. You might want to follow that link find your device, download the driver. You're going to download the driver to this computer. You're going to double click it to install the driver. If it tells you the driver is successfully installed, then you're going to plug in your device. So again, I can't show you some of this stuff exactly, but let me show you this. Uh, mine's already set up. If I plug it in, I want to show you here how you can confirm about the ability to... I already gave it. Sorry. Um, I'm going to plug in my device and to show you how to confirm if it is fully set up, we won't know if it's fully set up until we try to put an app. We won't get to that just yet. But one way to confirm if your computer sees that the device is installed is if you right click computer so we can try this if you right click computer and go to properties and then on the left side we will see device manager click on device manager if your device is not working you may see some of these exclamation points now the weird part is sometimes you see the exclamation points and it still works what you want to look out for, in my case, for example, I have an entry here at the top, Android device. Opening that up, it's my Motorola ADB interface. On mine, it's working. I've got a Motorola device. The interface is, is running. Yes, I have some of these exclamation points here, but I think I'll be okay. But if you plug in your device, and your device says Samsung, and it's got a bunch of exclamation points, most likely it's not working yet. So what we're going to do is... We're going to take a moment, five, ten minutes or so perhaps. I'm going to pause the recording. If you have a device, I would recommend you try to set it up. Again, I can only say as much as vaguely possible because everyone's got a different kind of device. For the moment, try to do number two. You can try to practice by creating an app and trying to do taco run Android. We didn't do that last time because we didn't have a device. Taco run Android space dash dash device. This is the ultimate way to check that if it works. We will do it in a moment. But I'm going to pause here. If you need help, I'll help people uh, case by case. Raise your hand, I'll help you out. But try to do this part here. Find your driver, install your driver, and then uh, check that um, screen and see if your device is working. 